Professor Dave and Chegg here. Now that we understand what chemical equilibria are, we will want to be able to look at the concentrations of substances involved in reversible reactions and be able to predict how these concentrations will affect the equilibrium of the system. Let's learn how to do that by examining equilibrium constants. Given this general equation for a chemical equilibrium, we can write something called the reaction quotient expression, symbolized by Q. Q will be equal to the concentrations of the products, each raised to the power of their stoichiometric coefficients, over the concentrations of the reactants, each raised to the power of their stoichiometric coefficients. So for the following equilibrium involving N2O4 and NO2, the reaction quotient, or QC, since we are using solution concentrations, will be as follows. Note that NO2 concentration is squared because of the coefficient of 2 from the equilibrium. It is important to understand that when a reaction begins, Q will be zero, since there will not yet be any products, and it will begin to increase as products are formed but Q will eventually become constant once equilibrium is reached, as concentrations will become constant at that point, and once that happens, Q becomes equal to the equilibrium constant of the reaction at that temperature. This is symbolized as Kc, and the equilibrium constant expression takes the same form as the reaction quotient expression, except that it is a constant value, since it is derived from constant concentrations. We should be able to calculate either QC or KC for any set of concentrations. We simply plug them into the reaction quotient expression. If they are equilibrium concentrations, we get KC, the equilibrium constant. If they are non-equilibrium concentrations, we get QC, the reaction quotient. Let's note that these expressions will only contain aqueous and gaseous species, as it doesn't make sense to discuss a solid in terms of concentration. Let's try a couple examples to make sure we can produce these expressions. First, we have 4 moles of ammonia gas and 7 moles of oxygen gas in equilibrium with 4 moles of nitrogen dioxide gas and 6 moles of water vapor. What will be the equilibrium expression for this system? Since these are all gaseous species, they will all be present in the equilibrium expression. Again, we know that K will be equal to the concentrations of the products over the concentrations of the reactants. Then we know that each of these concentrations must be raised to the power of their stoichiometric coefficients. So up top, that means a 4 and a 6, and on the bottom, there will be a 4 and a 7. This will be the expression for K. Now let's try this one where two moles of sulfur dioxide gas and one mole of oxygen gas are in equilibrium with two moles of sulfur trioxide gas. Given these equilibrium concentrations of 1.5, 1.25, and 3.5 molar respectively, what is the equilibrium constant for this system? Well, first we must write the equilibrium expression. That will involve SO3 concentration squared up top over SO2 concentration squared times O2 concentration. Now we simply plug in the equilibrium concentrations where they belong, and then plug this into a calculator. 4.36 is what we should get, and this will be a unitless value. So we now know what equilibria are, and we understand the relationship between the reaction quotient Q and the equilibrium constant K, as well as how to generate the expressions for Q and K. Additionally, we should be able to calculate Q or K given an equilibrium and all the relevant equilibrium or non-equilibrium concentrations. Professor Dave for Chegg, see you next time.